I'm Dorothy Heinemann. I'm a composer and I'm associate professor of music composition at the Frost School, University of Miami. I've actually been giving pre-concert lectures for many years. I used to do it for the Alabama Symphony Orchestra when I lived in Birmingham and um, sometimes they would Usually they would ask me to speak about new music pieces, especially premieres, like um, pieces like uh, Paul Lansky's double piano uh, concerto. But sometimes they would ask me to speak about Brahms. And when I got here, I was asked by the Arsht, uh, the Arsht Center in downtown Miami to give the Steinway lectures uh, before concerts. So for people like Long Long, and uh, Silk Road Ensemble, and most recently St. Martin in the Fields. And so when Kaleidoscope Musart asked me, could I please do this lecture on American composer George Crumb, I was just very honored and thrilled. And it gives me a chance to actually look at music that I love already and I'm deeply interested in. So a pre-concert lecture is different, uh, say, from the type of lecture I give every day, which are, you know, music students and music graduate students. Um, for a general audience, what I try to do is to invite them into the music by finding something that's very special about it that they can then listen for that they wouldn't already hear uh, just from the music itself or read in the program notes or get from, say, what the performer might say before playing the work. Um, and then I try to sort of follow that theme throughout each piece. And so uh, in the case of George Crumb, his music always reminds me of the magical uh, realism novels of say, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, for example. It's so, uh, I think of it as being delicately violent. Uh, it's powerful and yet it's very intimate. And so I might choose to talk about his symbolism, similar to the magical realism, or his use of unusual sounds, like for example, to use a slide whistle. It's a child's toy, and it makes a very hollow, kind of a breathy sound. And to have this in the middle of a concert for two pianos and two percussionists, it's just, it's startling in its intimacy. And so, there's a lot to talk about in Macrocosmos 3 and Macrocosmos 4 that resonates throughout both cycles. And uh, I'll be very pleased to reveal some of those things in, in the pre-concert lecture. George Crumb is one of those figures in classical music that really has totally unique voice. Um, it couldn't be done in any other kind of music though. Uh, this has to be chamber music. It has to be um, performed on traditional instruments because of the sounds he wants, because of the intimacy that he wants, and also because of the experimentation that he does. And so he's writing for you know, classical figures, like we've got, you know, arpeggios and scales and chords on the piano, but they are presented in a sort of a fragmented way, almost a dreamlike way. Um, so to take classical materials like that and fragment them, it really evokes memory for us and, and it opens up kind of this whole door to walking through into a dream state or a fantasy state and really becoming immersed. And then he gives you all of these ways in which the instruments have been extended beyond the normal classical use of them. Um, for example, humming into the piano or playing a percussion instrument into the piano it will agitate the strings of the piano and you'll hear this glorious sound that's always there. But in his case, he's able to draw attention to it. So everything he's doing is coming out of the classical world and amplifying it and exploring the ephemera of these instruments and 
in on many levels um, <clears throat> so that you get the timbre changes the coloristic changes and the music itself is ephemeral and so there's a lot of space things happen and then you wait for the next thing to happen while you're thinking about the previous thing and you know not the least, he quotes classical music, he quotes Bach, he quotes Chopin, but he may, for example, play Bach on a toy piano, which is a very distorted kind of a sound, a very uh, evocative sound for children, or for all of us, thinking about our childhood. It's a very quiet sound, bell-like sound, and so if he has a quote from the Bach Anna Magdalena for, for his daughter, you, and he sets it in the middle of a song that's about every day in Granada a child dies, and this shows up at the end. It, it's again, it's so powerful and so delicate at the same time, and it's music that really you can't forget, you're, you're touched by it in a way that you could be touched by Beethoven or Mozart in this very lasting way. Um, and I will also say that the music is so unique and so expressive and so powerful, even if you haven't heard anything like this before, that it continues to constantly be emulated by younger composers. and. <laughs> You know, the sad thing is there can only be one George Crumb. And unfortunately, when you emulate such a very distinctive type of music, all anybody can say is, well, that reminded me of George Crumb. So that's the composer that you're going to get to hear and the music, a little bit about the music that you're going to get to hear.